Howdy, this is Ralph about Joe. Just gonna go over the Orchard drip system. I finally got it working. This is the first drip that I've installed, so there were there were some kinks in figuring exactly what to do. Um, but it's all working now. Um, let's see. So there's three different runs. One coming down this row. And then one coming down the middle, I had to make sure to leave a path so we can bring the ATV in when we need to collect apples. Um, obviously right now it wouldn't be a big deal because we're not riding up and down, but I was originally actually planning to have drips going down each row, but I had to partition it differently just to make sure that we had this road. So I'll walk up the access road. You can see all the drips are working. I actually ran into a a stump because I had put on the emitters backwards and that was a <laughs> amateur hour move um, but they don't take pressure backwards and it was confusing me so I, once I figured it out that was fine um, so these are two gallon emitters initially I was thinking maybe we would do one gallon emitters but since it's going to be running off of the pump that's charged by solar power and they're not going to be charged at nighttime and they're going to be watered at nighttime, I actually decided to go with a higher gallon output so we wouldn't have to run the battery powered pump at night too longer than necessary. It might even have been good to go to five gallons, and, but I'll figure it out. And so now I don't have to water this by hand. There's like so many gains here. Um, I was watering, Josh and I were watering by hand about once a week. The problem with that is when you water by hand, it's clay soil. So you might dump, you know, five gallons on it, but at the end of the day, you know, two thirds of that washes off because it can't penetrate quickly enough. But with drip, it slowly saturates. And that's how clay takes water anyways. Like if you're, if you're watering into a porous medium, it's gonna suck it all up. You're not gonna need to worry about the how much you're putting in, of course, as long as you don't wanna flatten it down, get the air out. But um, this is gonna be great because we'll have to we'll get to use less water. The soil will be saturated more frequently. We'll probably be watering them every few days on the timer at nighttime. And um, there's a couple more things I need to install up here. Right here is a 30 PSI pressure regulator. We were at about 35 here, but I don't know in the future how much pressure I'm gonna throw at it, so this is just in case. These drip lines can generally handle from 30 to 40 PSI, so I probably would've been fine without it. I also have a filter to install, and then I'm gonna get a timer, and um, those are all gonna go in line right here. And in this piping, you can see that this is a pressure release valve. Um, so it's good to have a stop before this valve. So when you close off the system, you can open this ho whole hose up or this spigot up and get all the pressure out of the system so pressure doesn't stay. And it also, since this is at the top of the system, give it air so the water can drip out and drain out. And that's gonna be important during the winter time so you don't get cracked pipes. There's that. And so the PVC is getting ready to go up into the water tank over there. Um, and I'll just walk the PVC back. And this is what I did the last two days. All of this together and there's another junction over there. Um, probably be another drip system up there eventually for something else. Now this is fun, pickaxing under the road. 
right to here. And back to where I started two days ago. Um, next is solar. We got cooling of the humans, and then the drip down there. Now the next thing is solar so we can uh, not have to run that noisy thing. <laughs> 